be the first cop of calamity to get hurt, you're going to lose your job. A lot is really wrong. Here we are, all these years later, it's a national league. Millions and millions and millions of dollars have been raised for the dangerous jobs. Now, from the Marys. Look at Marys. If you were, uh, if you're a coach and your team wins ten games, you're a pretty good coach. His teams did it for 60 years. 622 wins. Incredible. Four national championships. But he did that without ever paying a ball play. First game I went down to play, he says, I, I can't pay you. I said, that's not what I'm here for. And he, he said, uh, we have a standard here. We don't pay anybody unless we pay everybody. If we can't pay the water boy, we don't pay the quarterback. That's the that's, that's standard. I had the honor of uh, introducing Pudgy into the minor league football Hall of Fame in Las Vegas. And prior to the induction ceremony, the, the, we had this cocktail party and all these teams from around the country trying to impress you how professional they were. Um, they pay this guy and that guy and this guy and that guy. So in my talk, I got up there and said, in 11 years that I played for Pudgy, like every other guy that played for Pudgy, busted most of my fingers, chipped the knee, broke an eye socket, and not only did I not get paid, I had to lend him money. <laughs> <laughs> True story. <laughs> Mike Goodwin told a story about how he's in the Mariners Inn, and a fella came in and said to Pudgy, uh, how, do you, how do you pay for this team? Pudgy and I do the chance books and the t-shirts and the everything else. And the uh, you know. uh, guy said, you do that every year to put a team on the field? But he said, no, I do that at the pay for last year. <laughs> I had the honor of being uh, with Pudgy at his last game. And uh, the, the plan was that a, a mariner was going to drive Pudgy and myself up to the Bronx. Um, and they were a little late, so I called up. And the ball player answered the phone. He said, Pudgy just collapsed here. You know, we have the medics and we have the... EMTs and everything here. And so I said to him, what, what hospital are you going to? And he said, uh, but he's not going to the hospital. He's going to the Bronx. Which is what happened. Now that young man, Mike O'Shea, I'll tell you about the, the star, he drove us to the Bronx. He played both ways in the game. He drove us back. He literally carried Pudgy up the stairs and put him in his chair. Can't ask any more for Marilyn. So, uh, just to I just got to say to the punch man, I'm sure we'll think about it here, until we meet for the next kickoff. Rest softly, my brother. Now I'm going to introduce Mark. The funeral, I appreciate everything. I just want to tell you a few of the nails in my coffin throughout the years. Marginal ball players, Bobby Palmer. I don't want to pick too many guys out, but Bobby Palmer, you were a marginal ball player. Also want to mention a few names. Richie Visco, Danny Kelly, Kevin Corsi, Stephen Waugh, Brian McGee and Patrick Ward. You guys were marginal ball bearers at best. We could have had a better crew for the punch man here today. Boys, I wrote a couple things down that really turned me off to that. The nails in my coffin. This go in Somerville, changing plays. I saw St. Peter at the gates today, and he told me he used to change plays when I sent him in and drove me insane. Nails in my coffin. West Court Swarthmore. That's nails in your coffin. They haven't won since Rupp and Dookie Hutchinson back in 78. They suck. They didn't have Spike, who, by the way, my son Spike is an absolute jet. Fast 
nicest human on earth and I coached all you mariners. <laughs> Not even close. I, uh, I owe Gino a couple dollars for the corporation, Gino, Gene the Bear, and for our football bets. K Sarah Sarah, Gino. <laughs> $100 for the Met Yankee bet. He told me that I should drink all the beer I want on him. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hold on. I have a couple other things here. And unfortunately, the last night that I was, uh, I was alive, it was Monday night football. I was with my son Spike, which was a beautiful thing. And uh, Artie Holstrom cooked that chicken scaparella. <laughs> I told him I was allergic to scaparella. <laughs> they brought me to the hospital and I was farting scaparella all night. <laughs> they said, what did you feed him? He's allergic to it. You killed Punchy Walsh, Artie. I just want to let you know. <laughs> With your chicken, and like Tina would call it, chicken sarsaparilla. Everybody knows Pudgy can eat sarsaparilla after 12 o'clock. <laughs> but I would like to thank everybody for being here, and I love you all. And until the next time we meet again, Pudgy Walsh loves all of you people. Good night. I would, I would like to bring up my grandson, Luke. To make a little announcement for us. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to announce the new coach of the Brooklyn Mariners, my uncle, John Walsh. John Walsh, if you're here, come to the microphone, please. It's actually only a three-month contract. I'm in negotiations with my wife for the next season. So we're going to take this season under consideration. Don't forget your mother in law uh, This definitely was for my dad. Sure. Pardon me? And your mother-in-law. Oh, my mother-in-law, but she's going back to Palm Springs in about a week. All right, Grammy. So the other thing I wanted to say was when Billy Ahern absolutely said uh, when my dad had one of his episodes in front of the house, um, the EMTs checked him out, he went to his football game uh, afterwards. The other one I wanted to mention, he had an earlier episode uh, out on Long Island. And uh, I called him up on Saturday, he goes, John, thanks for calling me. I go, what do you mean? I gotta be down for the softball championship game. He said, can you be here by 11? I was like, uh, let me speak to my sister. But we'll get back to that. So uh, he found out that West Court obviously was not in the championship game. But in fact, that Stephen Orr's team did win. And on Sunday night in the hospital, he said to me, I'm going to beat him next year. I'm going to beat him. So, and it's too funny. The other funny thing was, I really have to look at all the mass cards that were given, because the raffles that my dad would keep the game, uh, keep the Mariners going, people were putting their $100 checks into it. So I could go check the mass cards. So, uh, but I just wanted to... Sarah, Sarah. So, it's, it's only, I'll leave you with two stories that are only fitting. Um, when my dad wasn't walking so well, he says, I'm gonna go back to the Mariners Inn and I'm gonna walk in on my own power. power. So he gave me his cane, but he did say, John, open that door for me. So he got a running start and ran through the door and he just happened to land on a chair. So on Monday night when my dad passed away, I asked him, I said, Dad, are you okay to walk out the door? He says, it's fine. I pulled up my car and my dad walked out of the Mariners and then went on to another life. So here's the pudgy, he's with Catherine. And all of his friends are here.
to have uh, some t-shirts, Artie killed Pudgy. <laughs> I don't know if I like that too much. But I got to tell you something, man. There were so many guys who helped him when his legs went and he was, uh, you know, a little slow. So many guys. I don't even know. I, I, I don't want to mention everybody. Guys here, firemen. Guys from the mountains, Timmy Murray. Uh, Billy Wobby, so many, I, there's just so many guys who helped him. And you want to know something? He was a pain in the ass. <laughs> but I got to tell you something, he was our pain in the ass. I want, so many guys really helped him, and, uh, and it really meant a lot to him. And, uh, and it meant a lot to the, everybody who helped him, because you know, even though uh, you had to help him once in a while, it was okay. God bless you, Pudge. Yeah.